All right, good evening and welcome to the fourth episode of Bill Crawford's Casual Coaches Podcast. It's Wednesday evening, August 31st, 2022. We are here on location this time at Nicholson Stadium in Wellsville, Ohio. We thought we'd just mix it up a little bit. We're talking about football, so we thought we'd be at a football field. We're in the, we're crammed into the press box here. And uh, so thank you to everybody who helped us set that up, including uh, my man John Stokes, Tim Householder, um, Mr. Elliott, the AD, everybody that uh, helped us make uh, make this happen. So you can see the, the high school teams going through some, uh, running through some stuff out there in the background. So our uh, special guests tonight are our regular Michael Reiner from WKBN, Iron Mike. He's been on every one of these, all four of these casual coaches podcasts and our uh, our other uh, regular Nate Scott's not able to be here tonight, but he'll uh, make his triumphant return soon, I'm sure, wearing uh, Dolphins gear or Tar Heels or Warriors or something like that, right? <laughs> but we do have a first-time uh, special guest, Anthony Winston, uh, in the middle here. He's part of that original Wellsville crew of um, what I call knuckleheads, sports knuckleheads, and I mean that affectionately, of course, in a term of endearment, that gave me this idea for this podcast in the first place. These guys going back and forth on social media in a good-natured, good-hearted way about sports and stuff, so that really planted the seed, like I've said in other podcasts about it. So we finally got uh, Ant here, so welcome, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Good dude, too. He posts all kinds of good, feel-good, positive stuff on social media and Facebook. I see that stuff, and I, uh, I, I heed your wise words, my man. Appreciate it. Okay. So. Stuff that makes you smile, stuff that makes you laugh, stuff that makes you cry. That's all Anthony's all about. And uh, we're happy to have him run the show tonight. So Absolutely. All right, let's get some uh, business out of the way first. I want to mention that this is obviously just a grassroots, uh, just for kicks podcast, not monetized, not making any money. So uh, just to be official, any references to the NFL or any logos or any teams or lingo or anything is a copyright of the National Football League. And this, the comments that we share here are our own. Uh, you know, so-called intellectual property. We're not copying any of these responses or anything from anybody else that's uh, considered licensed, including anything you might hear in the background with music. We don't pretend to own the rights to copyrights to any of that. So, okay, let's just start about, this is our NFL preview podcast for this season, 2022 season, which starts next Thursday night with the Thursday night game, September 8th. So, we're doing our little NFL preview. It'll be fun to do some predictions and different things. So, let's just start to get started and get warmed up with talking about your favorite NFL team, how long you've been a fan, and why you're a fan of that team. And we'll let our special guest, uh, Ant, go first. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers is my favorite NFL team. Uh, I've been a fan for 15 seasons now. Um, and the reason they're my favorite team is because I feel like they represent the city. Hard hats, blue collar, come to work, and um, get the job done. So it's go Steelers all the way. Sounds good. Okay, Mike, I know it's coming. Well, it's always a great season every year when it's the NFL season. I became a Steeler fan from my father, Bill Reiner, and uh, my brother, Mitchell, and my mom, Paula. We've been going to Steeler games together for as long as I can remember. And just memories, man. Just being in that stadium and watching the team watching the team play for, you know, as long as I've been watching. And every year that I've been watching, Big Ben Roethlisberger has been the quarterback. So it'll be an interesting year without Big Ben under center, and we're going to see how Mike Tomlin and the boys get the job done. Uh, but it's a new era for Steeler Nation, and I'm happy to be a part of it as I am every year. So, Good stuff. And as uh, somebody who watches your posts and pictures and stuff from, uh, well, Acrisure Stadium or whatever. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> we, can feel, Boo. we can feel the love from the family, and especially when you all go. That's really cool. Like We can tell that yeah. you have special sort of love uh, for the Steelers for sure. Now, we're going to switch gears a little bit because we're all Steeler fans. And, uh, well, Nate Scott isn't here, so we can, uh, you know, run this town. I'm not talking about the squeaky dolphins. But, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, he's not here. It's his, it's his fault. We're allowed to harass him as much as he wants to see me. Right. And, uh, None of us can make a dolphin noise, though. I know. We, yeah, we decided yeah. to cut that out. Uh, yeah, I but <laughs> should have brought my laptop <laughs> so he could do the dolphin squeak every once in a while, dolphin squeal. But here's my here's my thing here. So lots of Steeler fans, obviously, uh, in the area, including Corey, My Corey Miles, of course. Big blue. Um, yeah, there we go. But there are a good number of Cleveland Browns fans in the Ohio Valley area. We're in Ohio for the most part, and there's a lot of Browns fans. So 
Let's let's get your thoughts. And by the way, I wanted to say that I'm in that mode still where I'm like the moderator, so that keeps things rolling. And these guys are the experts, so I just kind of run the show and let them talk about the actual uh, topics of the podcast. I like it that way. So let's but let's get your thoughts on the situation that the Browns are in because we've talked about it before, but things have changed since we got together last time. So how do you think it's going to pan out this season with all this? Uh, they think that's it's everything that's transpired, um, you know, since we talked last and. Uh, Go, uh, let's see here. Go ahead, Mike. Um, as far as the Browns go, um, now that we've seen what Deshaun Watson's suspension is going to be, now we have a more of a clear idea. A lot of Browns fans I've been talking to uh, that I know have kind of been telling me this is a lost season, and I'm kind of there scratching my head because it's not. Uh, early on in the season, they have winnable games. They play the Jets. Uh, they play uh, Carolina, obviously, week one. Um, and they play the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. So, I mean, this early part of the um, suspension window, it's definitely not doomsday for the Browns. I don't think this is a lost season at all. I think they probably have the most complete roster in the NFL. Um, and it remains to be seen whether Jacoby Brissett can right the ship, and we'll see how it goes. But, no, I think the Browns will do fine, and they'll be right around that wild card range. Anthony? I would have to piggyback off of what Mike said. Um, I don't see it as a total loss cause. Uh, it's an 11 game suspension um, and so they just kind of have to tread water do what they can do um, until Deshaun Watson makes his uh, return to Kirby reset he's a veteran in the NFL uh, he's won uh, plenty of games in the league so I feel like he has what it takes to at least uh, keep them above water and um, that defense w- led by Miles Garrett's pretty lights out so I think they'll be put into a lot of short fields uh, which will help them uh, to win some games until he gets back. There you go. So, uh, to be fair, we're talking Cleveland Browns for a little bit, and it sounds like you Browns fans have maybe something to look forward to. So, um, Okay, so time for predictions. This is a fun part because we can always go back later and look at this when the season's over or whatever and see Nate Scott knows exactly how that works. And that'll never die, of course. But time for some predictions. We'll start with Anthony. So you've got your sheet in front of you. This is pretty complex because I'm asking for predictions in every division of each conference. So you've got the, the AFC Northeast Southwest, the uh, NFC Northeast Southwest, and just run through. You don't have to go into great detail. Just let us know what you think is going to happen. And then when you're done, who's going to be the AFC champ, the NFC champ, and, of course, the Super Bowl champ. Um, okay, uh, so I'll start with the AFC North, best division in football to me. Um, my heart wants to say Pittsburgh, but logically and realistically, I'm going to have to go with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Joe Burrow, he's got something to prove um, coming back off the Super Bowl loss, and I think he's going to be ready to go to do that. So out of the north, I've got the Bengals. Uh, Moving on to the AFC East, I've got uh, Buffalo. Josh Allen, uh, nothing more needs to be said. I think he had the best uh, playoff game was between them and the Chiefs last year. So. By the way, Nate Scott picked uh, the Buffalo over his Dolphins. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Um, for the South AFC, I've got the Titans, Derrick Henry. Uh, I think they're going to be ready to go. Um, AFC West, this was a tough one for me. Um, but I think the loss of Tyreek Hill uh, put the Chiefs at a disadvantage. So I'm going to take the Chargers. I think uh, Justin Herbert's ready to go. Um, the, the addition of Khalil Mack, I think it's going to help a lot on defense. So moving on to the AFC North. I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers. I think the loss of Devontae Adams is going to be huge, but I never bet against Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, um, in the. Even in, though he's crazier than ever this year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, in the e- NFC East, I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to take the Cowboys. I think they're the most talented team mm-hmm. in the division. Um, so they're going to be ready to go. Uh, the NFC South. Um, this one, again, was a tough one for me because you never want to go against Brady, but I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to take my namesake, Jameis Winston, and the, um, mm. the New Orleans Saints to, to win the division. Mm. Um, and last but not least, the NFC West, I have the Rams. That They're just mm. too good, too loaded. Got it. Good stuff. Okay, Michael. Strong convictions there, Ant. For the AFC North, I'm going with the team that has the most coming back uh, from injury. Um, I think their whole team could qualify for the comeback player of the year, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Mm. Jackson missed eight games 
last year to end the season. He missed the final eight games. I think that he's going to come back in that defense, that rejuvenated defense with Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame. They're going to win the North, as much as I hate to say it. Um, and then from there, like you said, Ant, Buffalo Bills, um, number one across the board at all metrics, man, and they added Vaughn Miller, a nice veteran presence to get to the quarterback. I love it. I love the way their team is set up. Uh, with um, Gabriel Hype Train Davis as well going along with Diggs at the wide receiver spot, Bills. And then in the AFC South, this is probably my surprise of the board right here. I'm going to take uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars to Whoa. win the AFC Whoa. South. Oh, okay. I'm going to take the Jaguars. Those my sound bites. I am going to. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. I'm going to take the Jags for, uh, for reasons, and it's based on youth. This is the youngest team in the NFL. Uh, they have the youngest guy under center, Trevor Lawrence. They just paid Christian Kirk from Arizona. He's going to be airing the ball out. He's going to be pass happy. And in order to beat these teams that like to run the football, your Tennessees, your Colts, your Houstons, you got to be able to throw it. And I think Tre- Trevor Lawrence will do that. AFC West, I'm going to side with Ant here. They're my favorite team this whole season with my favorite player in the NFL, the L.A. Chargers, Justin Herbert. Kid was – a 4.2 in biology at the University of Oregon, or was it in high school? I don't know. Either way, dude's a genius. Um, well, if he has to dissect some frogs out on the field, they've got it made. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but uh, definitely, I think I'm going to take the Chargers as my one seed. Um, and then in the NFC North, we're moving on to the NFC North. It's pretty obvious here. It's Aaron Rodgers. It's the Green Bay Packers. Uh, they're the most loaded team, and they also have a loaded defense as well. Moving on, NFC East. This is where Ant and I differ here. I'm going to go away from the Cowboys this year. Philadelphia Eagles. I like it. Real under the radar. A.J. Brown signing. They pick up that Jordan Davis from Georgia in the draft that looks like the size of four people out there as a defensive lineman. Dude is massive. So I think they added the playmakers this year to get him over the top. NFC South, it's the GOAT. Come on. It's Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady all day, every day. Um, I mean, he's ruined the Steelers' uh, playoff hopes for a number of years, so uh, I'll stick with 12 over all of them. And then in the NFC West, as a real big surprise here, um, I love um, I love the Cardinals. I think uh, at first it looks like, I don't know, it could be a little bit of a toss-up. Uh, Rams, 49ers, Arizona, they're all going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a fight to the end. But I think that... Uh, the big signing for me in the offseason was Hollywood Brown. Getting him with Kyler Murray, they were college teammates at Oklahoma. I think that Arizona uh, wins it out of the NFC West in shock. So, Okay, now, uh, that, of course, that doesn't mean any of those teams will win the, uh, the <laughs> conference championships, but we'll jump back to Anthony and say, who's your AFC champ, NFC champ, and eventual uh, Super Bowl champion? Um, out of the NFC, I'm going to have to go ahead and take the Rams. I think they're going to make it back to the Super Bowl again. Um, Aaron Donald and that defense is just monstrous. So I think they're going to do it out of the NFC. And then out of the AFC, this is where it got tricky for me. Um, I did a lot of thinking on this one. And um, I think they're going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and take the LA Chargers to get um, to the AFC championship and uh, win out and get to the Super Bowl. I'll be darned. All right, what about you, Mike? Okay, I think uh, out of the NFC, like I said before, this is a real quick take. I'm going to stick with the GOAT um, in the NFC, Tom Brady. I think this is his last ride. I think all indicators say that in Tampa. Um, And then on the other side, I'm taking the Chargers. Um, I'm taking uh, my Chargers this year, my fantasy quarterback, uh, Justin Herbert. (laughs) And, uh, man, it's it's a real toss-up here. But as far as the acquisition of Khalil Mack uh, for the Chargers, I think it puts it over the top for me. I think this is a team that can run the football, can pass the football, can hopefully defend, and can hopefully control the clock this year. I'm with Ann. I'm going to take the Chargers. Okay, there you have it. We'll check back later and see how the season goes. We'll stick with you, Mike, on who you think. I know it's uh, this is, again, an example of way too early sort of stuff. But who's your offensive and defensive season MVP? Okay. Any, anything can happen, but you know. Anything can happen. This is going to be fun. Um, as far as uh, the, um, as far as 
the uh, AFC uh, MVP. I'm going to stick with my guns here. I'm going to take my fantasy quarterback again, Justin Herbert, as the MVP on the offense. Justin Herbert's hand, believe me. Oh, yeah, big time. And then um, defensive player of the year goes. Uh, this one's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm going to pick um, a guy that's going to help his team eventually get to the playoffs. This is a playoffs-level roster. It's sometimes when playoffs-level rosters emerge, that one difference maker comes out and carries the load sack-wise. And I'm going to pick Miles Garrett for the mm-hmm. Cleveland Browns. This is my defensive player of the year. I think he's going to help lead this team to the playoffs. And I think when you don't have your starting quarterback – a guy like that can help you get over the top. Yes. He says he wants to be the best player in the league, and he's motivated this year, apparently. Um, okay, man. As far as I go for the uh, MVP offensively, I would have to – I'm with Mike on this one. I think it's um, Justin Herbert. I think he's going to outplay um, his counterparts um, in the conference and going to get that MVP this year. Um, and then as far as defensive player of the year goes, I'm going to have to go outside the box a little bit on this one and take Micah Parsons from Ooh. the Dallas Cowboys. I think the young fella is ready to um, make the next leap in terms of being a leader. And he was in the running last year, right? I mean, he was a consideration last year. Anyways. Yes. Good. Well, good. You guys got some good stuff. See what I mean Why I have these guys on here? They know what they're talking about. So we have a fun uh, – Fun one here to kind of go off the off the rails a little bit. So we'll uh, we'll start back up with Ant again. So if you had to replace the QB on your favorite team with a celebrity for one game, who would it be? Oh man! Um, Obviously a nonsensical question, but just for kicks. <laughs> yeah. So if I have to pick someone, I'm gonna pick somebody that has some speed because if you can't throw the ball, at least he can scramble around a little bit. So. Um, I would have to take probably Usain Bolt. Mm. Mm. Wow. I thought you were going to go with Carrie Underwood. but (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, He taps some speed. Anyway, what do you think, Mike? uh, I'm I'm not picking Carrie Underwood, but but, um, my pick for the Steelers quarterback is uh, my guy, He's the number one. Uh, he's the number one actor in the world. He's rocking and rolling right now. No pun intended. I'm going Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I like it. I <laughs> Dude like is it. a motivator. I like it. Yeah. And every to. every time in the locker room, he just go, "Can you smell?" Uh, and he get them all fired up and going. Uh, so, yeah, I'd pick the Rock for sure. For Steeler Nation, all right. Rocky, all the way. Which, by the way, he uh, went to Freedom High School for a little while when he was younger up there in Freedom, PA, right along the river. Mm-hmm. Really? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Look it up. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Good deal. Okay, good stuff, guys. Okay, we're, we're uh, keeping it rolling here. We're up to what we call hot takes now. Uh, and we'll start uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with, uh, since it's his first time, we'll, we'll start with Anthony here. So basically hot takes, we got you a minute. You're on the clock for a minute. And you can talk about anything you want for that minute. So it's like Mark Madden's call, talk to anything sort of deal or whatever you call it. Okay. But so if you, I'll give you, uh, I'll, you're on the timer here. And again, it doesn't even have to be sports. You can talk about whatever you want. It's your platform for uh, one minute. Ready? Three, two, one. And Anthony's hot take. Uh, I just want to take a couple seconds and just say congratulations to Serena Williams. Um, I think she is amazing. She's the greatest tennis player of all time in my eyes 23 grand slams um she announced that this is going to be her last tournament and she just advanced to the second round so uh congratulations to the goat (laughs) serena good choice well done all right hold on mike let's see okay three two one iron mike's hot take all right well this is kind of a hot take but this is a question i want to pose to you guys okay Uh i just came across um something over the weekend, uh, my cousin Tommy Paisley, he's in a rec league of sorts where he's on the Chicago Bulls and he's playing the Lakers tonight in the championship. One of Oakland's best, Tommy Paisley. Good luck to you, cousin. Mm-hmm. But what I wanted to ask you guys was he came across something called the Elam rule in a thing called the basketball tournament. And the basketball tournament is uh, basically a tournament where the game is played and in the last four minutes of each game, what the rule is, 
is that the clock stops with the last four minutes of the game. So say if the score is 50 to 40, um, you basically add eight to the winning team score and the first team to 58 wins. Mm. And that eliminates the hack-a-shack rule. Mm. So if you're that team that needs eight points, it could be tough to get those eight points. The other team's balling out, mm. playing hard on defense. But sometimes teams go on an 18-0 run. Uh, do you see this happening in the NBA game or college game? I mean, in some sort of way? And do you think it's interesting uh, from a game perspective? I like it, but it's going to be a tough sell mm -hmm. for the uh, NBA or college or, or anything at that point, but uh, except maybe rec league or something. But that's fascinating. I mean, I think I like when they change things up a little bit, but I can see the reasoning for that certainly would make the games exciting absolutely. all the way to finish. Yeah, absolutely. We can yeah. cross it. We can hope, but that's, that's tough with the NBA rules committee or whatever. Right. I mean, and not that we're out here trying to change rules and <laughs> move uh, the sun and the earth or anything. But, wait, uh, wait a minute, that is the goal. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but I, and rearrange everything. But um, I think it'd be a fun, exciting. Uh, think it'd be a fun, exciting thing, uh, just in general, yeah. to add to your rec game near you. Absolutely, that's good stuff. Thanks for that, uh, adding that on there. I like. It. Okay, so that's it for hot takes. We're wrapping things up. I think we might have the first time ever been able to get this under thirty minutes. Um, no offense to Nate Scott. We'll quit, quit beating up on him. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, so to wrap things up, be sure to visit CrawfordPodcasts.com. That's plural. I'm going to put it up on the bottom of the screen. That's my website where it has all these podcasts loaded on YouTube, and you can just click on the links and read. And it includes my uh, Miller Green Music Podcast, um, which is my music-based podcast. But there's my sign over there. Um, you also can find my YouTube channel. I think I'm going to try to put a QR code. If you're seeing this QR code at the bottom of the screen, it worked. And you can scan that QR code, go right to my YouTube channel for uh, these podcasts and subscribe because the more subscribers I get, the more chances I have of getting like a customized name for that channel. So I'd appreciate that. Um, and then these are also eventually on, they're on Spotify now. They, I get them on Spotify pretty quick, but anywhere you see podcasts, I'm working on the rest of that stuff as far as like Apple, iTunes, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we'll, we'll go. we're just a uh, small time grassroots having fun sort of thing right now, which we're, we're having a lot of fun. Hopefully you, you folks out there watching us have some fun, but, and also I have, uh, oh, Michael's got one of the shirts on. So I've got those casual coaches podcast t-shirts from Campbell signs. They're on the website, 10 bucks. And that includes shipping. So if you're watching this from out of town, I'll send you one of these official T-shirts for 10 bucks out the door, including shipping. So it's just something to be able to cover a little bit of our equipment and stuff like that. And I got a battery pack so we can make this portable and those sort of things. So I'll set you up with one in here when we're done. So, um, so hopefully I'll roll some credits on this. But anyway, thank you guys for so much for getting up here in this press box. And uh, again, there's high school teams out there, Nicholson Stadium. Good job on the field. I'll be coming to you from, I think, like the 50-yard line on the new turf at Patterson Field, talking to the new head coach, AD, and the superintendent, I believe. I hope so. Fingers crossed. We've talked about it. hope we can make that happen soon. But stay tuned for uh, some more fun. And uh, I think that's it. Hope you feel better, Nate. Thanks for watching, guys. Nate, hope you feel better. Can't wait to see you on here again, brother. Get well soon, Bob. Go Dolphins. Squeak, squeak, squeal, squeal. Just kidding, go Steelers. <laughs> Here we go. Oh.